Major Music. Welcome to Major Music TV, it's your boy D-Dot, coming at y'all with another video. Uh, if this is your first time on this channel, I like to talk all things music production, uh, music marketing, pro audio, and audio engineering. You can also follow me on Instagram at D-DotMajorMusic, where really you're going to see all of my um, social media accounts down below. The reason we're doing this video, if you've been doing beats for years and kind of have a grasp as far as what type of uh, workflow you like and what type of studio gear you like um, this probably won't be for you this is gonna be really for a lot of the guys that are just starting out and fresh to music production and beat making I also have videos both about my iOS music production setup and what I use mainly here at home um, right down below I'm gonna leave the links as well to check out those videos more in depth but this is gonna be for again people that might be looking into getting into music production or they might just be getting into music so what a lot of people really struggle with um, especially in this day and age you have a lot more options than when I first started um, I started making beats around 2005 and when I started making beats, you did have like Reason, um, Logic also was a thing, Pro Tools, uh, as far as hardware, MPC 2000 was kind of the thing around that time, maybe also the MPC 500. But, you know, again, that was about 15 years ago and we're at a different time now. So you have a lot more options in terms of music production. And with that being said, there's gonna be a lot of factors that you're going to have to consider for yourself when it comes to music production. You can make beats on anything from a computer still, iPad, even your phone. So you have several options that I didn't have when I first started producing music. So with that kind of being said, you got to kind of also from a computer standpoint and also from an iPad standpoint, you have mobility. I know a lot of people, including myself, I made the jump. I started out producing beats actually using Reason on the PC, Reason 3. And then from there, I went on to uh, Reason 4 and 5. As well as over that time, I did some Logic 8, 9, and we're at Logic 10 right now. Been at Logic 10 for quite some time. And then um, I got into Machine probably around 2009 and I've been using that ever since. They're on the machine uh, MK3 series now. And then of course the big talk of the town right now is Machine Plus. So as far as like iOS production, now I got into iOS production probably about 2015, 2016, originally with Beatmaker 2, but now there's a lot more apps to choose from as well on the iPad. Now, what you're gonna encounter between the two, whether you're producing on iPad, PC, or Mac, um, you gotta think about, as I was saying earlier, mobility is the first part. Now, if you're gonna be producing on an iPad, and I guess you could say to a degree on MacBook as well, um, I know some people may be working with a limited budget, but with that being said, I would definitely look at getting a machine uh, with something at least 128 gigs or higher. Um, personally, myself, I have a 256 on my iPad, and on my Mac right now at home, I have a terabyte. So um, what I usually do also is I may make a beat on my iPad, I'll export it out into my iCloud drive, and from there, I'll delete the original file to kind of save space on my iPad Pro. Don't sleep on iPad at all for production. A lot of people always ask me personally, um, how do I stay with a consistent amount of content? How does my workload stay consistent? Well, with the iPad Pro, it allows me not only to make beats, but it also allows me to do some video editing inside of LumaFusion. And then um, even sometimes iMovie now, Main difference between the two with LumaFusion, you have a lot more functionality as far as, you know, if you want to do like music videos, you have a little bit more control as far as being able to align the music with the video. 
um, as well as just generally speaking, editing features all together. With iMovie, um, you're kind of limited as far as what type of editing you can do that makes sense. Um, doesn't really give you the option to align your audio with your video like LumaFusion does. That's also one of the things I will do like in Final Cut on the Mac. The iPad that came a long way, you could pretty much use the iPad for almost anything you want. I mean, I, I would say my iPad Pro, which is a 2016 model, is going to be faster than my iMac. Now, hopefully soon, I'll be getting a new iMac. Uh, we'll see what that is like, or even a MacBook Pro, because I have a older model, as I was saying earlier, uh, it is a 2013 model. Well, it's still capable of running. I mean, there's gonna be a lot more issues now because it, it's going to struggle in terms of when I run certain plugins that require a lot out of the processor. So it's definitely for me time to get a new Mac. You know, I, I don't miss a beat when I do things on the iPad. So I would definitely say consider that as well. Consider the iPad. Now, talking collectively, your apps and a lot of your um, AUV plugins, which are Audio Unit version 3 plugins, that's going to be like um, what a VST is to Logic or Machine or Pro Tools or whatever uh, production program that you're using on your computer. All of the programs and apps and plugins for the iPad are going to be less significantly in some cases than their computer counterparts. So if you're also working on a budget, you may want to consider that for iPad Pro or you know even iPad Air, whichever route you decide to go. All right. So um, now as far as from a PC standpoint, I couldn't really speak too much on that. I haven't really used PC uh, for production in quite some time, but I will say whatever you get, whether it's a PC or whether it's a Mac, I would definitely say you want to look to have at least 16 gigs of RAM in it and go solid state if you can as far as your uh, storage because it's going to be faster than um, your traditional hard drives that were in older computers previously. All right, so. Let's just say you got your iPad, you got your Mac, you got your PC. Now from there, um, what is the next step? So don't be that guy, and a lot of people don't know, so I'm gonna go into it. So you may, now before I say this, just like I said earlier, is if you're working on a limited budget, that's totally understandable. But what I'm about to say now is, don't be that producer that uses just regular computer speakers to make beats on. That's something that, you know, I did it back in 05, 06, until I realized getting some studio monitors um, was a lot better for me being able to mix my own music down. Now, you're going to have a lot of different people online that have a preference as far as their own studio monitors. Now, me personally, I have had experience with three different sets of monitors. Now, currently, I'm using the ILO Micro from IK Multimedia. Uh, these run 300, and you're gonna get the pair for 300 now what I like about those is the fact that they offer pretty good sound and the response I would say is pretty flat compared to um, what I used to use I still have one which I'm gonna show y'all which is the rocket 5 from KRK um, those are also pretty good now those are gonna be sold I believe as a single um, these don't quote me on this, but I want to say for the single it's like $150. There probably are some newer models of the Rocket 5. Uh, for the pair it'll be $300. Um, those are good as well. Now, the only one thing I will say about the Rockets, I felt like they had a little bit more on the low end 
um, as far as frequency than the iLoud Micro from IK Multimedia. Now, another thing I like also about the iLoud Micro is the fact that they're Bluetooth and portable. So if I wanna take them with me wherever, um, IK Multimedia actually also sells a case specifically for the iLoud Micro. Um, there's also now a newer version of those as well, which kind of, uh, you know, it's one of those things where I bought the iLoud Micro, then like a week later they announced the newer version of those. So Now, there are going to be some other monitors as well that you're going to want to consider. I know Yamaha makes some pretty good monitors. Outside of that, M-Audio is another good company that makes some good, good monitors. I actually, going back to just having standard computer speakers, when you're at the point, if you're getting into mixing down your music, those aren't going to be ideal for you in terms of being able to distinguish your highs and your lows as accurately as you will on studio monitors that are designed for audio engineering. So there is going to be a big difference in you using just computer speakers over actual studio monitors. For those, I would just definitely say do your best research, maybe read a couple of forums, uh, if you can't go down to like a guitar center or you know any type of music store in your area, ask some questions, maybe take a listen at some demos and see what you like the most. Even if you have any like producer friends that you can kind of talk to about that. The next thing is once you have your studio monitors, um, they don't just plug directly into your computer. Now they're going to have to go through something which is called an audio interface. Now the audio interface is also going to be how you run a microphone so if you're an artist as well and you want to plug in your external mic to be able to record into like Logic or Pro Tools or whatever program or application that you're recording into, you're going to need an audio interface won't allow you just to plug a microphone. You could actually go back to the video that I was referring to earlier about more in depth info what the audio interface does but it helps route that audio signal from that microphone to your computer it allows you to run your speakers so the anything that you're creating on your computer um, if you run your audio interface either USB out or USB C some of them some of the interfaces are now USB C it used to be have firewire audio interfaces not so much anymore but that's how you're going to get your audio from your computer to the speakers with an audio interface now personally i have used audio interfaces from m audio i've also used from uh focus right and currently i'm going to be using from personas the studio 26c which i also did a video on on this channel last but not least Next thing you're going to need is a MIDI keyboard. Yeah, you're going to need a MIDI keyboard. The reason I said it like that is because I know now we're in an era where, you know, it's no knock to a lot of you young guys. You know, I know what I'm about to say, you're probably going to say, hey, it's one of these old heads talking to us. I just don't see how y'all do it, but you're going to need a MIDI keyboard. Some of you guys are sitting in here with a mouse and clicking notes in a grid and making music that way. While um, sometimes that may be cool, I think working with a MIDI keyboard um, allows you to play chords and a little bit more uh, realistic feel than just clicking in notes um, into a grid. So. With that being said, I would say with MIDI keyboards, do your best research as well. Um, I used MIDI keyboards from quite a few companies. M Audio for one, I still have my Axiom 49 after what, uh, 10 years or longer. Um, now I don't use it anymore, um, it's just here. I mainly use my complete control uh, MIDI keyboard. And then I also have the Mini Lab from Arturia, which is kind of like my portable on the go 
MIDI keyboard. Now that one's gonna be 25 key opposed to my complete control, which is going to be 49 key. The only thing about the MIDI lab, although it is 25 key, it is going to be a little bit more bulky, but it's a lot more durable in terms of a lot of the 25 key keyboards that I've used that are portable because I've owned from Korg uh, their Nano Key 25. I liked it but it ended up breaking on me and I had another 25 key as well from IK Multimedia. I had this one uh, which this works sometimes that's why it's still here. I have to kind of um, move around the micro USB port to get it to work sometimes. But this is my primary um, MIDI keyboard 25 key that I take on a road. I take my mini lab, or also some of you probably seen in previous videos that I've done, uh, use the Roly Seaboard block, which is also a 25 key. I would in fact say it's a little bit more portable than my mini lab, but um, it's a little bit different to play using the 5D technology and expressive uh, MIDI polyphonic expression that is capable of the Roly Seaboard Block. If you wanna learn more about the Seaboard Block, I also did a video on this channel about the Roly Seaboard Block. Not sure you can find it anywhere anymore because I think they are kind of pushing Roly, meaning they are kind of pushing now the Lumi series, which uh, came out recently. Uh, I, I personally, I haven't used the Lumi series yet, but it looks pretty interesting. I don't know, maybe at some point real soon, I'll consider getting one and doing a video on it, but uh, you may want to look at that one. It's really good, especially if you're trying to learn music theory because the keys light up um, and it kind of shows you the notes and there are gonna be kind of some tutorials um, from them that kind of teaches you like music theory and, and things along those lines. Uh, but the thing I like also about the mini lab, it actually is plug and play and a lot of the functionality as far as some of the knobs that now you can basically do mini learn depending on like if you're on iPad or if you're using um, anything on, if you're using any program on your Mac for production. Outside of that, I would say you can find a good mini keyboard for anywhere from a hundred dollars on up i remember i started out with a 99 dollar i think it was called the key station from m audio and it served me good for a little bit um ended up selling it for like dirt cheap to a friend who uh, was getting into production at the time but um i needed something a little bit different than i got the axiom and then the complete control and so on and so forth there's one more thing i want to talk about now there are also some free programs or apps out there that you can use if you want to get into production and one of those will be mpc beats whether you have a pc or a mac from it's going to be from makai actually going to be a free program for you to use on your computer. There is GarageBand for anyone that has a Mac out there as well as anybody that has an iPad or iPhone. Definitely don't sleep on those two apps as well. Uh, if you maybe got a new device, you're kind of looking for a good production program to use that maybe fits your needs. Definitely do your best research on that. There's so much, you know, you may look in some of these uh, posts online or forums or YouTube, wherever you're looking for direction as far as what program to start using for your first app or first DAW. And um, there's gonna be certain things. I use several different things for production. Out of all the programs that I use, Machine, I would probably say it's my primary program on my Mac and then my primary app on my iPad I use is what, BeatMaker 3. Uh, but, I mean, there are also great things about a lot of other programs and apps out there. So, I would say if you're a first time um, producer or beat maker looking for what to start using, do your best research. There are also a lot of good demos out there. I know when you buy certain things, uh, you may get a demo of Ableton Live 
try that out. I know a lot of people that use Ableton and they love it. I personally, I've never used it. Maybe something I'll get into one day. I don't want to make this a very long video. I just wanted to uh, cover some things that you may need as a producer that's just starting out for the first time or maybe you guys are new to the music production crap and just kind of looking for some direction as far as what to get next and you know what advice to give and I, I definitely say research it uh, maybe if you see someone like right now I see as I said earlier a lot of people using Ableton um, I think it, you know that's a that's a kind of a uh, that's a popular thing right now. A lot of people are also going back from using software to a lot of these standalone production uh, stations like MPC One, Machine Plus, MPC Live. Uh, I believe there are some rumors that Ableton's going to do something along those lines as well at some point. So you may want to uh, hang out for that. But there are several options out there. You can go ahead and try definitely I hope you find something that works out for you and as I say always you can leave some questions in the comments as far as if there's anything that you see that I'm using and you have any questions about it and just like I said at the beginning of the video I'm going to leave those links below on my iOS iPad music production setup as well as what I'm using more in depth here at my uh, home studio setup if you like this video, go ahead, hit the subscribe button. Let me know you were here. You could also follow me on Instagram at D dot underscore major music. I've been connecting with a lot of you guys on there. I appreciate all the support you've been showing to my channel. I just wanted to do this video because I know that it's November. Some of you may find this after November, but it is November 2020. And over the next probably month or two, you're going to see a lot of great production gear go on sale uh, for good prices. going to see a lot of programs and apps as well go on sale. And right now, this is the time to take advantage of those things. So I hope you find what you're looking for. And until next time.